Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Caitlin. I'm an American who is living in beautiful Sydney, Australia. I finally made the move. It has happened and I am finally here. So today I wanted to share Australian words that I know have a different meaning over in the States. So if you want to see what those words are, stay tuned. So the first word I have for you guys is hotel. And I know this seems like a pretty standard word. We all kind of know what a hotel is. You typically think of the Hyatt or the Hilton, those types of chain hotels. But in Australia, even though those kinds of hotels do exist, hotels here are a common name in a lot of pub names, especially the older pubs pre like 1970s. So some of the oldest pubs in Australia still have the word hotel in their name. One of these is actually the Woolpack Hotel in Parramatta, which is actually very close to where I am in Western Sydney. It's been around for over 220 years, and a lot of the older taverns and pubs do have the name hotel in it. It has been so tough. I've done a good bit of research trying to find the exact origin of why this is true. And even though I've heard a few stories, it seems like it's because hotels way back in the olden days didn't require a liquor license so what a lot of pubs and taverns seemed to do was they would have like a spare room that they could in theory rent out and call themselves a hotel without having to pay for a liquor license now like i said i've been trying to do some research i can't pinpoint if that is the exact reason but colloquially that seems to be the most common reason why hotel is in a lot of pub names. So the second word that I have for you guys is pretty common and I think a lot of you guys knew that this would be on the list and that is thongs. So thongs in Australia are what we call flip-flops over in America. So this type of footwear is known as something different all around the world and in Australia they are called thongs. In America thongs have a completely different meaning. I think a lot of us know that thongs in America are actually this whereas they are called a g-string over here in australia another word that you'll hear over here in australia a lot is bird and it doesn't just refer to the animal a bird over here in australia does refer to a woman it's kind of just a slang general term nothing offensive it doesn't mean anything bad if somebody says you're a bird it just means that you're a woman typically no one's going to come up to you and just say oh you're a bird obviously that would be really awkward but if you hear somebody that you're talking to talk about some bird that they met before, they're talking about some woman. Obviously in the States, birds are just the animals, unless you're in Philly like I am, whereas the birds are the eagles. If you're an American, you're definitely going to hear this one over in Australia, and that is yank. It's not offensive, it is just short for Yankee, which basically just means an American. It's a totally unoffensive term. So yank over in America is pretty much just a verb, like literally just means to tug or to pull on something. Whereas over here in Australia, a yank is an American and it's totally not offensive. If somebody calls you a yank over here in Australia, they're not trying to throw any shade on you. They're just pointing out the fact that you are American. So this one you'll see on a couple of those other American Australian word lists and that is rubber. And rubber over here in Australia is basically just an eraser. Think of those like typical pink erasers that we used to bring with us to elementary school over in the States. Whereas rubber in America, really it supposedly means condoms, but I've never once in my entire life heard somebody refer to it as a rubber. So whether or not that's still true is a totally another thing. But if you're in the States and you start talking about needing a rubber for your assignment, um, that's not going to go over well. And the next one is chips. And this is confusing to Americans, to Brits, to Aussies. I mean, we cannot, for some reason, these three countries figure out exactly what chips are everywhere. Like if you go to America and you ask for chips, you're going to get a packet of like Lay's potato chips. Whereas if you're over here in Australia and you ask for chips when you're ordering food, you're probably going to come out with a plate of French fries. So chips mean different things in different countries. You kind of need to know the context. Obviously they do have like bag chips over here in Australia. Yes, they're called chips. Same thing with French fries. They're called chips. Cheezels are chips. Doritos are chips. So many things over here are just chips. This is biscuit and this is so different in Australia compared to the States because they are talking about two completely different things. Biscuits in Australia are what we call cookies over in the States, whereas biscuits in America are kind of similar to rolls, but not really. So like American biscuits, those old good southern home style buttermilk biscuits, nothing is like that here in Australia. They don't really have that sort of thing. You might find that on a couple of menus. 
Some people might kind of just have it in their little weekly meal rotation because they got it offline, but typically biscuits in the States is not something that you're gonna find here in Australia. Now the next one is toilet. Obviously toilets are pretty standard, they're pretty universal. A lot of us know what a toilet is, but in America, we don't say we're going to the toilet. We normally say we're going to the restroom, we're going to the ladies room or the bathroom. Whereas in Australia, they just say they're going to the toilet. So it's not common over here in Australia to hear somebody say they're going to the bathroom. You're going to hear them say that they're going to the toilet. If you guys are liking this video so far, please hit the like and subscribe button down below. Join our little Amer Australian family. I post weekly about the differences between American and Australian culture and overall the process of learning to live down under. Now these next two are very much car related and one of those is a bonnet. Now a bonnet, what we think in America, is a type of hat, some fancy like old school women's hat, whereas a bonnet over here in Australia is actually what we call the hood of a car over in the States. So the front part of the vehicle, I have a picture right here, I think we all know what the hood or the bonnet of a car is. So if you hear somebody talking about the bonnet of their car, that is the hood of their car over here in Australia, which is on the opposite side of the boot of the car, which is what we call the trunk over in the States. So the boot of the car is the trunk. I don't know why they call it a boot. I don't know where these terms kind of came from, but overall, yeah, if somebody's talking about the boot of their car, they're talking about the trunk. Now this next word you don't hear often in the States, it's a very old school word, but over here in Australia, you will hear somebody say that they are feeling really crook. So crook is not a criminal. Crook means that you're feeling ill, you're feeling sick, you're just not feeling well. Whereas over in the States, once in a while you hear somebody say the word crook, but it does mean in reference to somebody who's a criminal, somebody who's caught up in criminal activity. So you won't hear crook very often in the States, but when you hear it over in Australia and somebody says they're feeling crook, just know that they're probably not feeling well. So holiday in Australia technically has two meanings. Obviously there are holidays like Christmas, Boxing Day, Australia Day, Easter, actual holidays that we have over in the States. Well, kind of, sort of. We don't have Australia Day over in the States, obviously. Same reason that they don't have 4th of July over here in Australia. But if somebody says they are going on holiday over in Australia, it doesn't mean that they are waiting for Christmas, that they're waiting for Easter or something like that to start. If an Aussie says that they are going on holiday, it means they are going on vacation. So if somebody is going to go for a holiday in Bali, in Fiji, even though we might not be able to anytime in the near future, if somebody is going on holiday in Australia, they are going on vacation. So the next word is chemist, and I don't just mean the scientist over here in Australia. In America, a chemist is just a scientist. That's kind of the understood word. If somebody is talking about a chemist, they're talking about a scientist. Whereas over here in Australia, if somebody says that they are going to the chemist, they are going to what we call the pharmacy over in the States. So over here, actually one of the biggest chains is called Chemist Warehouse. It's almost similar to like a CVS or a Walgreens over in the States. So if somebody says they are going to the chemist, they're not going to go see some scientist. They are going over to the pharmacy here in Australia. Now a word that has very different meanings in both places is pissed. So if you are in America and somebody is pissed, it means that they are angry, they are furious, you don't want to go near them. They are fuming, they are pissed off. He's an angry elf. In Australia, however, if somebody is pissed, they are drunk, they're intoxicated, they're hammered, they're trashed, they are falling over, they are just completely wasted. So in Australia, if somebody is pissed, they are drunk. Whereas in America, if somebody is pissed, you might wanna keep your distance. Now the next one, and it's still a little bit weird to hear, is trolley. So there are some places in the States that still use trolleys. So trolleys in the States are some form of transportation. Whereas in Australia, a trolley is what you use at the supermarket what we call a shopping cart over in the States. So if somebody's using a trolley in Australia, they're using a shopping cart, they're not about to go get public transportation. This next one's probably something you guys weren't expecting and that's lemonade. So lemonade in Australia and lemonade in the States are two fairly different things. So in America, lemonade is typical water, lemons, and sugar, all that mixed together and it's the perfect summer drink. 
Whereas in Australia, lemonade is kind of what we call those lemon lime sodas over in the States. It's kind of similar to like a Sprite or a 7-Up. We don't really have any sort of direct equivalent over in the States. So lemonade over here in Australia is amazing. I really wish we had something like this over in the States. So if you're in Australia and you go for a lemonade, don't expect the old country time type of lemonade mix. Expect something a little bit more along the lines of let's say a 7-Up. Luckily I'm not monetized because this word could probably get me in trouble, root. So root in Australia is typically like a more bogan way of saying to sleep with somebody. So if somebody is rooting somebody else, it means that they are sleeping with them. It doesn't mean that they're cheering for them, which is kind of how we take that word to mean over in the States. It either means obviously the root of a tree or root as in to cheer for. So that old song, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, where they're talking about rooting for the home team. Um, has a very different connotation over here in Australia. And the last word that I have on this list for you guys is poppers. So poppers in Australia are what we call juice boxes over in the States. And in the States, poppers, at least from where I'm from, they might be different things in different parts of the country. It is a pretty common word. But poppers tend to be those little celebratory streamer plastic things that you get at the store, typically right around New Year's. So I know poppers also have another kind of meaning over here in Australia, but um, I'm not going to get into that one in this video. So if you hear a kid say poppers in Australia, they are probably talking about a juice box. So that is it for this video, you guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button down below. I post weekly about the differences between American and Australian cultures and the overall process of learning to live down under in Sydney, Australia as an expat. My name is Caitlin, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.